Welcome to Our Lady Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. We are celebrating with you today the seventh Sunday of Easter. Let's begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. And to better celebrate Mass, let's take a moment to look into our hearts and confess our sins. When we fail to love each other, especially in our own families, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we fail to be courageous in living out our faith, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we want to do and mean to do but don't, the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that we may recognize the presence of Christ in our midst. Father, help us to keep in mind that Christ our Savior lives with you in glory and has promised also to remain with us until the very end of time. And we ask all these blessings through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witness laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. the recompense I will give to each according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. 
Blessed are they who wash their robes so as to have the right to the tree of life and enter the city through its gates. I, Jesus, sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let the hearer say, come. Let the one who thirsts come forward and the one who wants it receive the gift of life giving water. The one who gives this testimony says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks for uh, joining us on this seventh Sunday of Easter. We have such great readings. I want to get right into them. And I'll begin, obviously, with the first reading, the Acts of the Apostles. The story of St. Stephen is remarkable, but this particular passage shows us just how remarkable it is. First of all, if you were a Christian in the early church, in the founding days, you wanted to be careful who you told, because most people in the population were not very fondly disposed toward people who were saying that Jesus was the Messiah. So all Stephen had to do to live was to keep his mouth shut, but he can't. We're told in this passage from the Acts of the Apostles, he would tell anybody who listened, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is the Messiah, he's the one we've been waiting for, he's the center of my life. And of course, by doing that, he turns the crowd, mostly of his brother Jews, against him. And in doing that, they decide they're going to punish him and they punish him, as you can see, by stoning him to death. But that's not all the story is about. It's not just about him having the courage of convictions to speak his mind. Also, at the stoning is Saul, who holds the, co the coats of these people who are stoning St. Stephen to death. Saul, who becomes St. Paul. Now, what do we learn from that? He was a wretched man who was out to get Christians and was responsible in this particular case for fomenting the crowd to the point where they killed one of our first martyrs in the church, St. Stephen. And here's what I love about that fact. Awful as it was that Saul, who becomes Paul, did what he did. He becomes, with the grace of Jesus Christ, one of the greatest of all the apostles, if not the greatest. He gives his whole life to Christ. And in that story, the story of Saul, who becomes Paul, 
the, the sinner who becomes the great apostle is, I think, a hope for every one of us who is a sinner. Saul was a sinner, a major sinner. He was persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. But there's room in this church for the worst of the worst, for the greatest sinner. No one, no one is beyond redemption. And Saul, who becomes St. Paul, the great apostle, is testimony to that. There's something else in this reading that I particularly love. Like Christ on the cross, Stephen learned the lesson that if you really want to follow and live in the image of Christ, you've either even got to forgive and love those who in his case not only persecute him and try to silence him, but they put him to death. And he says very clearly, Lord, forgive them. In the image of Christ, he knows to truly be like Christ, we've got to look in the face of those who persecute us, who are awful to us and say, nonetheless, I love you, I forgive you, always and forever, no matter what. This is an absolutely remarkable story. We learn, first of all, about the importance of the courage of your convictions. Stephen will not be silent. We learn about Paul, originally Saul, major sinner who becomes a great apostle, which shows us time and time again, no matter where you've done, what you've been about, that we have a God who forgives us and always welcomes us home. And then finally, we have Stephen, about to be put to death, who in the midst of stone hitting his head, says, Father, forgive them. And there's something else he does that I hope you and I can do at the moment of our death. I love the last words of St. Stephen. I hope when the moment comes for you and me to go home to God that we can say what he said, Lord, receive my spirit. He didn't have a doubt in the world as he was dying painfully that he was going home to the Lord, that we might have the same faith, the same hope, the same trust, and be able to say, Lord, receive my spirit, because I know once I die, I'm going home to you. All right, let's go to that second reading from the book of Revelation. What's St. John saying? He's saying lots of things, but here's the, the line I want to focus on. Accompanied to each, uh, pardon me, recompense to each according to his deeds. Recompense to each according to his deeds. You know, in recent times, we've made a great fuss, as we should, about divine mercy and about the greatness of God's love for us and mercy for us, that no matter where we've been, what we've done, what sin we've committed, we have this God who has rays of mercy and love flowing from his heart. It's a beautiful concept. It's a beautiful truth. But I think sometimes we're so into the loving God in recent times that we act as if really there's no accountability. You know, like basically I've got a God who forgives me always and forever, no matter what. So I really don't have to worry about what sins I commit because at the end of the day, he's going to take me back. Now, those of you who are parents or grandparents, you know very well that you're going to overlook a lot with your children. You're going to forgive almost anything they do. You're going to love them no matter what. But that doesn't mean when they mess up or they're planning to mess up, you're not going to hold them accountable. Well, that's what this reading is about. We have a God who says, I am all mercy and love, but I'm also a God who loves you. And part of love is holding you responsible for the things you do. That there is, in fact, a final judgment, that we are held accountable, or as St. John says, recompense to each according to his deeds. So, what's in your wallet? What are your deeds? And you may be thinking, well, God's all about mercy and love no matter what. He's awfully merciful and he's awfully loving. He's also someone who holds us accountable and says, Jim, before letting you into the gates of heaven, let's talk about some of the stuff you pulled that wasn't so good. Now I'm hoping I get by and I hope you do too, but let's not fool ourselves into believing that the God who is a God of mercy isn't also a God like a good parent or grandparent who says, I nonetheless, loving you as much as I do, I will hold you responsible for the sins of your life. Why don't you get rid of the sins and then come happily to heaven without having to pay for the dues of sin? Okay, finally in the gospel, great gospel. Father, they are your gift to me. Um, I love this. I don't know, you know, on your worst day, when you're not feeling very, very much worthy of anything, and when you're convinced that you're not very valuable, when your self-esteem is in the basement, I want you to open this gospel and read this. Jesus is talking to his Father in heaven, and he's talking about you and me, and he says in no uncertain terms, Father, 
they, us who follow Jesus, are your gift to me. Can you imagine that the Savior of the world considers you and me personally to be a gift? That he thinks that when the Father created you and I, he, the source of all life, that he was giving us as a gift to his Son. And I'm telling you, I think for a lot of us, we have a very, very weak self-image. We think we're okay, but not great. We put ourselves down. We look at what's weakest and stupidest in us and most sinful in us. And we're not very good at celebrating who we are. We think, oh, you know, I don't know about that. I, I know all my mistakes and my weaknesses. We're good at celebrating everything that's wrong with us. And I think this is Jesus's way of saying, hey, cut it out. If I love you so much that I say to my father that these people, my people, the people of the church, they're your gift to me. He's saying to you, stop selling yourself short, stop wallowing in low self-esteem, and recognize how great we must be that Jesus says, you, you watching this mass, me, sinner though I am, we are God's gift to Jesus. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel very precious, very sacred, very special. I'm a friend of Jesus, and that matters and is something wonderful. Okay, now, I want to talk about other stuff. And the other stuff is the crisis, the heartbreak of what we've all been going through recently in terms of gun violence and what it means. And I'm going to say a couple of things and uh, listen carefully and if you can, with an open heart and mind. First of all, I've said this in a few interviews I've done, we, got, we can't get past the fact whether it's the shooter in Buffalo last week, the shooter in Texas this week, or almost all of these terrible acts of violence against innocent people. It's us. It's us, guys. It's not the women. It's us men. We carry a special burden. Maybe it's testosterone, I'm not sure. We get angry. We have to prove ourselves. We're macho. We fly off the handle. And sometimes when we do, we get violent. I don't think it's an accident or a coincidence that you look at most all of the terrible acts of violence in recent times, and it's guys who are behind it, very often young men. And we've got to ask ourselves, what is it in our nature as men that makes us think it's okay to give in to anger and violence? What is it that allows us to think that we're allowed to bent by hurting other people. And I know it's not all guys, to be sure. I know it's probably not you and me, but we're part of the problem. We're men, and men, more than women, seem to give themselves over to acts of violence that are seemingly unexplainable. Now, I'm going to try to put what I see as some of the violence in a context. What I do when I hear about these acts of violence is uh, I'm horrified, like you are. I'm heartbroken, like you are. But I also want to know more about the background of these shooters. And so often, you go into the story of how they were raised, of the family they come from, and there's great brokenness, there's great anger, there's great hurt. Now, that doesn't excuse what they do at all. But I've got to believe that somewhere in the discussion of the violence, we've got to ask their parents, what did you do and how did you do it? When the shooter's mom this week in Texas gives an interview where she said, oh, he was never a violent boy. I didn't see any problems. You got to say, mom, are you out to lunch? Do you not know your child? Nobody one day goes on their 18th birthday and buys machine guns and writes what he wrote online and is a happy and content child. But mom, where are you? And why don't you know? She's going to have to deal with that the rest of her life, and that's the burden that those parents carry. But what I'm saying is, parents, we are responsible in so many ways for at least being aware of what the children are going through. And where we see problems or signs of difficulty, to act on them and not to bury them or to deny them, or uh, it'll pass. I can't tell you how much I think you moms and dads are so responsible not just for the kids who turn out to choose horrible things, but that you should celebrate too, the kids who turn out right. They are your handiwork. 
Parenting is, is so hard. And I gotta tell you, I joke sometimes, you know, when they talk about Pope Francis, is he gonna change the rule and let priests get married and have kids? You know, when I was a young priest, I would have thought that was a wonderful idea. But the longer I deal with families and marriage and raising kids, I think when you take on the role of family life, parenting, you take on something remarkable. But when you do it right, you can literally touch forever because the kids that you raise right and you teach rightly, they are the future of this world, both the good and the less good, depending on how they turn out. And that so much depends on you. I wanna close by sharing with you a story. Adrienne Thayer, a wonderful mom, early on in her marriage, three sons, and she and her husband split. And she's now trying to raise these kids with very, very little money, no support, and we just celebrated her funeral this, this week. And I asked her three sons to remember her. But I wanna share with you the writing of one of the sons, Stephen, because it touched me so deeply. And it goes to my point about the seed that you plant, you parents. Good seed, I hope, that makes all the difference in the kind of children that move forward in life. So listen to what Stephen wrote about Adrian, his mother. My mother and father, he writes, got divorced when I was very young. And when they separated, we had very, very little money. In fact, we were put on food stamps. And I can remember one time my mom and I went food shopping. And when we went to pay for the food, my mother did not have enough food stamps to pay for all the items. And I can remember my mom crying at the register. So I started to cry as well. When my mother looked down at me with tears in my eyes, she knelt down next to me and she said everything was gonna be okay. And when we made it back to the car with our few bags of groceries, my mom again said to me that everything was going to be okay and that we're going to get through this together as a family. When I think back on this situation, Stephen writes, now that I'm a father of three beautiful sons and I have an amazing wife as their mother, I have to say, my mom taught me a very important and vital lesson. Family is everything. And as a parent, you must do everything you can to be there for your family. I'm not saying that the perfect mom and dad are going to produce perfect kids, but I'm saying that when we examine our lives as Americans and we look at the acts of violence and we wonder what's the way out, I've got to believe so much of it resides with you who embrace that incredible vocation of being parents and that what you do in the raising of your children matters so much. Stephen and Chris and Robert Thayer are all three great men and I have to believe it's because of the love and devotion and commitment to family of their mom now in heaven, Adrian Thayer. Every one of you parents is an Adrian Thayer. You can make all the difference in the world and hopefully for the good. As a people of faith, we now pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers a petition. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the church may continue to be the sign and source of the unity of the human family, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that all Christian denominations may draw closer to one another in charity by drawing closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that the Lord will hold in his hand and shower with his care all mothers, living and deceased, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Anthony Di Giovanni, Joe Amarin, Kathy Orofino, Jane Baxter Collins, Edward Ryan, John Ballesteri, Rhonda Bayrami, Bernie Henley, Richard Walsh, Bill Stanley, Karen Tuminello, Ricky Di Maria. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Adrian Thayer, Dolores Malloy, and Grace Megliorice, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Albert Rizzo, the intention of Monsignor Jim Lasante, the intention of Mary Condra, the deceased members of the Connolly family, Agnello Orofano, Anne Pusterino, Nicole Pusterino, and Gina Spiezia, whom we remember at this Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let me add a number of intentions. I want to pray as always for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine and for their valiant fight against oppression. And I thank God for the generosity of so many other nations who are stepping up to support our long-suffering uh, friends in Ukraine. I want to pray too for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. You heard about some, but let me add some more. Uh, Tommy Alfano is an old friend and his mom, Gloria, is going through some serious health problems. So I, I remember her in this Mass in a special way and pray that uh, Gloria Alfano will be healed of her illness. Let me just pray as well for Peter Visconti, for Bill Kershaw, for Margaret Lasanti, and for Doug Ohodo. I pray for uh, Barbara Turley, for Penny, baby Penny Grace, for baby Emily Clark, for Barbara Truglio, Edith Consiglio, Mary Littress, Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer. I pray for everyone who's suffering from addictions of any kind. I also pray for Kevin Shields, Michael Cataldi, George Gill, Michael Cardone, Charlene Eisencraft, Noah Torelli, Laura Lishan, Georgie Ritter, Al and Angelo Clementi, Gary Hudson, Michael Campagna, Laura Elizabeth Steele. I pray for Anthony Posterino and for Jody Posterino. I pray for Dennis Sweeney, for my friend Vern. I pray for Bob Telasco and Nan, his wife. I pray for Rita Pizzi and uh, for Sean McGrail. I pray as well among those who are sick for Ronald Butler, Steve Gagliardi. I pray for Byron DeMilo. I pray as well for uh, Kelly Schultz and for Dorothy, the mom to Sheila Blanchard. Pray for Russell Castro Giovanni, uh, for Dario Rivera. I want to pray as well for Cara Mooney McLeary, uh, for Loretta Sweeney, for Roseanne Simone, for Barbara Simone. I pray for Dave Walsh. I pray for Anthony Scotto, Jim Harmon, Judge Tony Falanga, Heidi Ignoski, Van Tutwiler. Always I pray for my mom, Cecilia Lasanti. I pray for Vita D'Amico, for Leanne Lasanti, for Ron Citrano, and Jim Barr. Pray for Anthony Kremi, for Howie Pomerantz, for Nancy Lang, for Joan Donovan, for Dean McDonald, Marilyn Arbogast, Nancy Palumbo, Pat McTackett, Melissa Bergman, Nick Castellano, Jorge Clemente. Pray for Anthony Ponte, Emma Nicole. I want to pray as well for Thomas Brown. Among those who are sick, I keep in mind baby Owen Andrews, for my dear friend Kathy Bordengo. I pray for Brian Bronzini as well as Tommy Swingros. For Lacey Ward, for Edward Baker, Michael Messina, and Drew Layton. For Mary and Pat Sears, for Billy Campanaro, I pray for Lou Imperioli, for Kathy Orofino, for Aline Patricia McGrail, for Edith Consiglio, and for Kimberly Cusack. Pray for Michael and Zachary Chanover, for Marion Barone, Joey Silvestro, I pray for Millie Bolando, Mary Rao, Marie Tanay, 
Bella Glauda, Bill Franca, Dennis M. Dow, for Jennifer Murphy, for Dennis Donovan, for Jamie Scotto, for Carly Fergola, for John O'Brien, for Joseph Graffeo. And among the sick as well, I pray for Larry Lewis, for Joseph Sardone, for Maria Cariola. I pray for Amy Seifert, for Jenny Chomlisky, as well as for uh, every member of the Catovano family. And uh, let me ask you to pray as well for our friend, Father Kevin Thompson, who is also experiencing some illness. May he be made well and come back to full good health. And now for those who remember who have died, I pray for Sophia Maglione, for Nicholas and Jean Delario. I pray for Bill Kelly, Catherine and William Donovan, Richard Rosmarin, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Lorraine and Ray Campbell, Dawn Spitali, Nicholas and Sally Corderaro, Corinne Locke, John, Maureen and Ann Raver, Joseph McGrath, Arlene Wolfarth, Mary and Ed Raver, Chuck Tahart, Mary and Joseph Monopoly, John Slade, John and Alma Kappa, Fel Morali, John Neeson, Michael Manzella. I pray for Kenny Bolando, Christina Formato, Cynthia Prague, Caroline Dodaro. I pray for Gaetano, Sal, and Angelo Emolo. For Anthony Preziosi, Kevin Brown, Pauline Romano, Ed and June Jandovitz. For Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Pecora, Irene Romano, John Simone. I pray as well for Rocco Pasola and for Marjorie Geary. Among those who have died, I keep in mind Kristen Sedita, for Nick Sabo, for Nicholas James Albertson, for Luigi Antonio Rosmini, for Gemma Stumpo Rosmini, for Ernie Meditz and Nancy Murphy, for Elizabeth Perry Sobel and Kevin Bayon. I pray for Amelia Alaka, as well as Anne Maria Tenay, Monica Carrison. I pray for Billy Taylor, Robbie and Jim Pure, Regina Robinson, Joan and John Donnelly, Jimmy Soldo. I pray for Richard Jackal, Henry Meyer, Colin and Tommy Ryan. I pray for Barry Champney, Eleanor Mazzi, Brian Hussey, Suzanne Scanio. I pray for Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Leon Sherman Jr., Ronald Chiapo, Kate Kelly, Marie Sicolo, for Norbert Bobby Gomez, for Connie and Sal Cusimano, Ted Scorcher, Jerry Monk, Vincent Castoria Jr., Dave Robin, Thomas O'Shea, Matthew Toriello, Marie Austin, Vita Palmieri, Emily LaFasso, Kathleen Smith, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor and Will Robles, Mary Ohodo, I pray for Luigi Conti, Tracy Wachowski, Dale Louise Odom, for Elmer Shans, for Joe and Marion Bacigalupo, for Alex Haliasos, for Pat Sassar, Peggy Barr, Marvin Klein, Jerry and Edward Casal, John McMacken, Raymond Hussey, Judge Don Belfi, my dad, Nicholas Lasanti, Tino DiBello, Joe and Joan Largan. I pray for Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Marks, Father Tim Hurton, for Bishop John McGann and Bishop Jim Daly and Bishop Gerald Ryan and Bishop Jim McHugh. I pray for Cardinal John O'Connor as well. Let me pray for Ed Almer, for Paul Stashut and all the deceased members of the Stashut family, for Gary and Michael Scorcia, Marilyn Salonia, Constance Polio, Nick Martone, Jerry and Michael Pangala, Captain Tim Murray, Dottie Lauer and Norma Calabrese, John Glauda and Joseph Lovett, for Marie Casavecchi and Carolyn Duval, for Scotty and Nina Passarelli, for Bob and Pat Caliban, for Joe and Peggy Bauman, for Tom Sully O'Sullivan for Lorenzo Bronzini, for Joseph P. Callahan, for Lynn Lane, Ed Birch, for Mike Goff, for Virginia Kegney, for Sister Mary Angela Buser, BBM, for Peter Gannon, I pray for Margaret and Katie O'Connor, for Ben Julik, for Victor and Lillian, for Bobby and Marge, for Tom and Helen, for Barlow and Ethel, Tommy Engelhart, Danny Carlson, Luke Johnson, Evan Lalicki, Pray for Christopher Abbott Marco, for Frank Kilgannon, for PJ O'Rourke, for Robert and Joan Cook, for Ernie Metz, for Anna Gomes, for Paul Struzieri and Anna and Peter Canal, for Leonardo Playa, for Donata Forlenza, for Aniello Ferraro, for Marie Hoyecki, Christine Lisa, for Marion Harrington, and for Marie Gail Penny. I pray for Margaret Freeland and for you, Kiritsi. Praise well for uh, Michael A. Diorio. 
for Captain John Robert Minatoli. I pray for Father Dennis Wheatley, OFM, for Louise McNeil, for Lena Lasanti, for Mary Yuli, for Genevieve Minatoli, for Virginia Denner. I pray as well among those who have died for Barbara and Joseph Miller, for James V. Aquaviva, for Betty Moore, for Donald J. Winkler, for Christopher Abbott Marco, Richard Fasano, Christopher Laybourne, Adina Placido, for Helen Kadash, for Bruna Sopa, for Jack Carroll. I pray for Madeline Alari, for Anna Malandro, for James Zidi, for Carmela Labolita, for Mindy Singer, for Scott Schneider, for Lorraine DeRico, for Joseph Nestor Mondello, for Marlene Sager, for Joseph Paul Walweber, and for Vernon Oliver Harmon. I want to pray too for all of our brothers and sisters who are in jail or prison and who feel that everyone has forgotten them, but they might know that that's not true. I pray for our first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMTs, as the pandemic continues to bother many and make many people sick. I'm praying for all those who suffer from the, the virus, but also for our doctors and nurses and EMTs and all those who are fighting the virus. I pray for your special intentions and I pray for mine. And I ask that we turn them all over to the Mother of God, our advocate before Jesus, as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His church. Lord, accept the prayers and the gifts we offer in faith and with love. May this Eucharist bring us all to eternal glory. We ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. In this season, after Ascension Thursday, the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, he ascended to heaven to be with the angels and the saints who would sing his praises. Christ is the mediator between God and humanity. He's the judge of the world and the Lord of all. He's passed beyond our sight, not to abandon us, but to be our eternal hope. Christ is the beginning, the head of the church, and where he has gone, we hope one day to follow. The joy of the resurrection and the ascension renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Father, we acknowledge your greatness in all your actions, 
show your wisdom and your love. You formed us in your own likeness and you set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and to rule over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but help all, sweet, all people to seek and to find you. Again and again, you offered a covenant to us and through the prophets taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so love the world that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to those in sorrow, joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and to bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this same Holy Spirit now bless and sanctify these offerings. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The night before he died for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which were poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming again in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you have given to your church and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this bread and wine into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for Francis our Pope, John, our bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the saints and martyrs and angels. Then, in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. comes from a family and it makes such a difference the way we live family life the way we love each other the way we forgive each other the example we give 
So we want our families to be better than they've been. We want our families to be holy and good. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer now for your family and for mine that truly will learn from each other how better to love and so to transform our needful world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, Spirit. with faith in your love and mercy we eat your body and drink your blood let it not bring us condemnation but health in mind and in body my friends behold the Lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed may the body and blood of Christ Bring us all to share in everlasting life. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So a couple of things uh, at the end. One is, uh, you probably read through the uh, fine print when I mentioned that we were praying for Father Kevin. He too has uh, succumbed to the bug and uh, it's around. This virus is still around, it's not gone. And uh, I'm just once again encouraging all of us to do whatever we can to be cautious, to be safe. Uh, lots of people in our church, for instance, have already had their booster shot. Uh, certainly. A lot of people going back to wearing a mask in public places, uh, sanitizing our hands, right? We were doing that all the time in the beginning and we got out of the habit. Never get out of the habit. And just be conscious that even if you get through it, fine. A little cold, a little sniffle, you may give it to people for whom it could cost them their life. So who the heck wants to spread that? Uh, let's be cautious, let's be careful, and let's do everything we do rooted in love. I'd also just like to encourage you all to um, do a couple of other things. One is uh, what I talked about at the homily today, please talk about with your kids. 
No one ever thinks that their son or daughter could ever do anything horrible, but it's happening almost every week in our country and around the world. And you wonder, where along the path did that kid go wrong? And not just the kids, you know, I have to say that when I look at the horror of Ukraine, and it all goes back to one man, Vladimir Putin, I find myself wondering what went wrong in the family that raised him to make him so insensitive to the sacredness of life? How does he justify in his conscience what he's doing to innocent people? Well, something went wrong along the way, and in most cases, it goes back to the family that raised and loved us. So talk about this, please, with your family. Also, as always, I encourage you all to, to watch Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. You can do that on YouTube, or you can go to Sirius XM and listen to the program on Sundays. It's on three times. That's channel 129 on Sirius XM, the Catholic channel. But whether you listen to it or, uh, or you watch it, please uh, be with us. The guests are good. This week, our guest is Bill O'Reilly, uh, one of the most famous and iconic of newsmen, uh, who's written a new book called Killing the Killers about the war on terror. But we don't just talk about that. We talk about faith, about what he is as a dad and how he tries to pass on good values. It's a side of Bill O'Reilly you rarely see. So it's worth a watch, please. And then uh, next week, the guest is David Miliband. Now, he used to be the foreign secretary in England and the Labor government, but uh, now he's taken over the International Rescue Committee, which is responsible for trying to help refugees around the country. At this moment, we've got over 45 million people who are without homes around the world because they become refugees because of war or oppression. Uh, so it's a huge problem. It's one Pope Francis speaks about so often because he knows we are keepers of our brothers and sisters and 45 million of them are wandering the earth without a home. So David Miliband is trying to do with his organization what he can. Uh, a great, great man doing good things for others. So next week is David Miliband speaking on behalf of the International, International Rescue Committee and this week is Bill O'Reilly. Join us on Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Now let's pray. God, our loving Father, Jesus, our Savior, hear us. And through this holy mystery, this Mass we've celebrated today, give us hope that the glory you gave the risen Christ will also be given to the Church, his body, where he truly is, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.